on Old Crane Highway and Brown Station Road. Yes, quiet for the moment, but there is more rain off to the south. Then the rest of Southern Maryland, you guys have flood warnings that are in effect until 5 a.m. The St. Mary's River over toward Great Mills was out of its banks and rather high with quite a few road closings up toward Chaptico as well. We go to the west and south now. Now west of Richmond, we've been seeing a few more in the way of these showers that have been popping up uh, to there, the heavier ones. We still have a couple of heavy ones though that have been coming in toward western Charles and southern St. Mary's County. Notice around Scotland Beach and Ridge, Webster Field as this activity lifts toward the north and some problems up there. And Nanjamoy, get ready, coming out of Fairview Beach, we've got these heavy showers that are coming right up the Potomac that'll head toward Quantico as well and eventually in toward D.C. Now, this is going to abate some as we get into tomorrow afternoon, but right now, at least for the overnight, periods of rain, heavy at times, on and off. That flood watch is all night into at least tomorrow morning unless it gets extended. So you're going to wake up likely soggy, but by the middle of the day, notice less activity here in the afternoon. Some showers, maybe some rumbles of thunder. Looks like the best chances will be south and east in the afternoon. So we may actually see a peak of sun tomorrow, and it looks like more sun and fewer storms headed our way for Sunday. That means, hey, we could be back in the 80s before the weekend is over. I'll detail that seven day forecast in a few minutes. All right, right now, let's get you a first hand look at what's happening across our area. We'll begin in Virginia. John Henry headed up river for a look at what's happening at Great Falls, and he's there tonight live with more. Hey, Leslie, there is a lot of water rushing through this part of the Potomac River tonight, and that's much to the delight of visitors who get to see an amazing sight here. Hear that sound? Well, don't worry, it's not static and there's definitely nothing wrong with your television. That's just Mother Nature doing its thing. So when we got out of the car, that's the first thing I heard. That roar, well, that's Great Falls. It's a lot of water. It, it amazes me. Fairfax residents Herbert Canellis and Kristen Butler took in the view Friday afternoon. I've been to Niagara Falls before, and I would say that the noise and the roar from it is similar to that. You're saying you've been up here before, uh, but it was different. Yeah, very different. You can't see rocks or anything like that. The currents are very powerful. It's, it's just a lot of force coming down. A tourist from Chicago put it this way. Say, wow. <laughs> well, we are blown away that this is just tucked behind a neighborhood. Beautiful too, though, right? Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Now, the National Weather Service keeps records of the Potomac River and its depth a little south of here around Chain Bridge. And believe it or not, despite all of that water that's rushing through this part of the Potomac, that area still has yet to reach minor flood stage. Leslie? All right, John. Last night we told you that the owners of the store at White's Ferry were preparing for flooding. Our team stopped by for a look at things tonight, and things are going pretty good. But the Potomac is far from finished rising, so another flood at that store appears likely. By the way, the ferry itself is not in service again tomorrow. Now let's move downriver into the district. The floodgates are up along the Georgetown waterfront tonight. It's usually hopping there on a Friday night, but tonight it's a ghost town. Here's Mike Valerio. Hey there, Leslie. It is kind of a strange and ominous feeling here tonight because if this forecast holds, the Potomac River is expected to rise here more than seven feet higher than its normal water level. So that means that part of this boardwalk here at Washington Harbor will be submerged. But we want to show you some images from earlier today. This is a crane that's hoisting the last barriers into place all the way up near K Street at the very front entrance of Washington Harbor. And the goal here is to not repeat what we saw back in 2011. That's when the barrier barriers were not fully in place, causing $30 million in damages. Now, the barriers here are up and they can hold water back after it rises a full 17 feet higher than normal. Now, the record is 19 feet, but on a weekend, Leslie, when this promenade should be packed with graduates, families, co-workers out near the water, uh, you know, it's certainly striking to see only a handful of people out here and, of course, taking in how quiet it is now and how quiet it's been throughout the evening. Now, the expectation here again is that part of the boardwalk will flood, but it's not likely that the water at this point, given the latest forecast, will make it to the flood barriers. Leslie? They've got those barriers up just in case. Howard will have a different view of DC flooding in just a few minutes, but first remember this. Constitution Avenue shut down by flooding back in 2006. Parking garage.